today we got a re-gear on this JK four-door sport. Um, got all the goodies here from Yukon, going to 456s, full master rebuild kits, um, new carrier for the front. So anyways, that's what we're going to get started on today and see what else comes in for us as far as projects go. All right, stay tuned. Tying the drive shaft up and out of the way. Maybe. Now we can just assemble the front diff. Making sure our bearing caps are stamped. We know which side they go on. I believe are 355s we're gonna end up swapping over to the new carrier so we can go down to the new 456s it's almost the same it just offsets it just barely enough so you can get your uh, pinion depth and backlash set correctly without a crazy amount of shims take this uh, ring gear off and that way we can access spider gears that need to come out go on there alright <clears throat> now that we got the bolts out I'm just going to tap around the ring drop that thing out Now we can get to the spider gears real easy. So, look in there, got a dowel pin. Holds our I don't even know what that's called. Today we're going to call it a spider gear rod, spacer <laughs> thingy, my jigger. So, anyway, back to this. Got to find a nice long punch that will fit inside there, punch that out, push the rod out, grab the spider gears. Side gears around, pull those first. One, two, and your spline gears with the spacers will drop out. Make sure you grab the thrust washers. Also got those thrust washers back there. 
All right. Oh, that's trash. Reassemble. Clean these off a little bit. Brake cleaner. Every shop's best friend. Expensive best friend. Just gonna get some of this old oil off. Make sure we start fresh. Spider gear is back in. Dowel in there. Make sure our holes are nice and lined up for the new pin. New pin. This guy nice and hot. Maybe. Yep. But it'll open up a little bit so it'll just slip right on. Be nice and even for our new bolts. Oh. So, throw this in our handy dandy microwave. Alright. Got our ring gear nice and hot in our microwave. Just kidding. It's an oven. Do not put your ring gears in a microwave to heat them up. Now it should slip right on. Make sure you get your red Loctite on all your ring gear bolts. Let's get one started. Straight across from that. See, we don't have a gap anywhere. Now we just gotta thread the rest of these in, get them started. And since we're running 3 8 bolts on those ring gear bolts, um, they only get torqued to 55 pounds. So we're just gonna finish threading them in, really low setting, in a crisscross pattern. Make sure she's. That's done. Swing it over here to the vise. For nifty shifty torque wrench to 55. <clears throat> Same thing, we're gonna torque these in in a crisscross pattern. One click cross. Now 
now that we've got the ring gear on and torqued, uh, we're going to set that aside, let it cool down a little bit. Um, start working with the pinion. Get the old crush leaf, don't need that anymore. Now we need to press this bearing off. There's an OEM shim underneath there. It's going to set our pinion depth. We want to pull that out. We're going to start there with the OEM. Uh, see where we end up with. We might have to pull it back apart and add some shims, but it's a good starting point anyways. So I will grab the puller for that and get that bearing off. Alright. Well, we've got our Econ bearing puller. Works pretty good on the Dana stuff. And the bearings aren't super tight against the pinion. pieces on. And I'm just going to zip her off. Sure, our surface bearing is going to sit is nice and clean. Drop that OEM shim on there. Then we'll get into our master rebuild from Yukon. Tiny bit of grease. Inner bearing grease is going to sit. Helps press it on a little bit easier. Also, take it off if we end up having to pull the bearing off to get a new or more or less shims in there. So, so that's done. Alright, so we got the new bearing on. Now we just got to press her down. I'd like to save our old races that we cut off. It makes it easier to press on there. Give it something to land on. That's set. Uh, Handy dandy dimple dye spacer. bearing on. We're going to set that aside for now. Ring gear is cooled down a bit. Now we're going to pop out the new side bearings of our master kit. And these bearings are exactly the same, doesn't matter what side they go on. Um, with the Dana 30 design, outside shims, so we don't have to worry about pulling bearings off the old one to grab the shims underneath, because there aren't any. So, grab our bearings and go press these on now. <clears throat> same thing, got an old race. We 
got enough of a lift there. We can just flip it, set it down. Do it again. All right, we got all our bearings pressed in that we need for now. Um, remember, we took the old braces and shims off. Make sure we set these old braces out of the way so they don't get reused. Anytime you replace new bearings, you want to go bearing, new race, because they do mate to themselves. So it won't quite work just put them in an old race. Um, matter of which sides so we'll set those there and now it's time to get the new pinion races into the housing which means we gotta punch the old ones out so we're gonna get started on that see you in a minute <laughs> All right, so we got our new races pressed into the housing for the pinion. Um, also put in the new inner axle seals, so that's all done. Um, now we're gonna get ready to put the pinion in. Um, like to throw a little bit of setup lube. That way we get a correct reading. We don't have a dry bearing holding us up. outer all right that's done another quick little tip uh, since the master kit comes with a new pinion nut take the old one grind out the locking part of it it's about a quarter inch down uh, this will help in case the pinion needs to come in and out a couple times. Um, it's not going to maul up the threads from pulling that lock nut off and on. So we already have that ready to go. Grab the yoke, pinion bearings, and we'll go slap her in real quick. That in, outer bearing on this side. You don't have to worry about that washer that came out right now. It's not going to affect anything, so. Yoke back here. And that just needs a couple taps. I need that big hammer. Behind you. Give us enough threads to get the nut started. So that's on. Now we're just going to tighten it and get it close to our pinion preload, which is 14 to 19 on this, I think. Be good for that one. Now we're ready to throw the new carrier in and see where we're at with the new depth. All right. Like I mentioned before, most of the time axles are punched, um, so you can't confuse these sides. If you can see there, there's a Y on this one. And that has a matching Y. You go to this side. It's kind of hard to see, but right there the Y is sideways. So you're going to want to put and match the Y that way. If those aren't there, 
pretty easy to just grab a center punch or something. Do two dots on one, one on the other. Just make sure they correspond to the right side so you don't get those confused. But now we can throw the new carrier in. OEM shims, put them back how they came out. back should be a little tight to get in there uh, grab the brass hammer thank you Josh tap these in that off with the brass punch. snugged up and see what kind of backlash we're working with all right so we got our bearing cap snugged up um, went to check backlash and got nothing so carrier comes back out we need to adjust the outer shims move the ring gear farther away from the pinion so we're going to do that now All right guys, so um, going to pull this out since we got our preload back. It's hard to pull out. Let me show you a little trick. Um, just grab a wrench that fits your ring gear bolts. Put it on there, it's gonna sit against the housing and grab the yoke. All you gotta do is spin that. That'll push it right out for you. change up some shims so driver side is going to get smaller and whatever we take out of that we need to add to the passenger side so out of the gate I measure the OEM shim so we got 128 now keep that noted passenger side So we're gonna start with probably taking 10 thou out of the driver's side, putting that to the passenger side. Usually 10 is gonna give you anywhere from six to seven um, thou on your backlash. So that's kind of what we figured out. Um, now we're gonna pull out the Yukon shim kit. Um, Yukon's nice because they send you a capture ring so your shims don't get all out of place. We'll put the two big ones together, start there. One's reading one twenty-four. Also one twenty-four. Alright guys, so uh I got the shims dialed in, got the dial indicator back on there, and sitting right at about six dial, which is nice and tight. I'm between six to seven. We'll uh, double check another spot. Let's be sure. A couple spots. Six. 
Go get there. Red six there. Same thing. Cool. So we're good there. Now all that did was let us paint it, check pattern, and that'll tell us whether we're, our pinion depth is good or not. We'll do that right now. Alright guys, so we got the teeth painted and uh, rotated everything around to check our pattern. Actually really happy with this one. Um, so if you look in here, it's not so much where the pattern's landing this way, it's where it is this way. And as you can see, we still got some paint up on top of the tooth on the drive side. And same thing on that side. So don't worry about setting that. Um, I guess it would just be your pattern. Don't worry about it this way because it's almost impossible to achieve. So right there, it's showing me that my pinion depth is correct because it's about centered in the tooth this way, if that makes any sense. So we're actually gonna leave that. Um, now we're gonna pull everything out, um, finish up getting, we gotta put in the crush sleeve, get that dialed in and set to the right preload, and then once that's done, we'll pop the flange back off, put our seal on, and then button everything up, and the front's gonna be done. And we'll uh, work on to the rear. Well, no more play in it. It's tightening down. Now we just gotta set the preload. Go little small tidbits. Tidbits. Say tidbits. First try. Alright guys, well we're uh, just wrapping up the front now. I uh, got a few things to tidy up, ABS lines and whatnot. Then we're going to move on to the rear, get that rear gear done. Uh, probably won't record that because it's the same shit we just did. So, yeah. And then our customer will be back for the included 500 mile oil change swap. And that will give us a chance to double check and look and inspect all the rear gear stuff we did. So, anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.